Hello everyone, welcome again in this tutorial. So today we will learn how to do a timer, okay, by using uh, the same circuit that we do in the previous tutorial with the RTC, okay. But last tutorial we just displayed the time. Today we will learn how to uh, start and stop timing uh, any activity. Then we will calculate the period between these two times. Okay, it's exactly the same circuit that we have constructed in the previous tutorial. However, I have added only one button, okay, to pin number two. Only one push button to pin, num to pin number two. This button is uh, active low. So we need a pull-up resistor. I will later activate it in the, uh, activate the built-in resistor. Okay, by using the pull-up uh, method. Later we'll see how you do it in the code. Okay, so <clears throat> we use RTC again to record the time for the start and stop timing <clears throat> that's been triggered by this push button. And after we finish recording, then we'll calculate the period of or the elapsed time between these two times. Okay, so we use this button, tactile button, that we connect to pin number two to uh, start and stop our time. Okay, so let's move on to the computer and see how we will do the code for this circuit. Okay guys, so here we go again. We are in front of the laptop now to do the uh, software part for the Arduino with the RTC timer. Okay, so first of all, we need these two library to communicate with the RTC. Uh, chipset. This one we already talked about it in the previous video. If you haven't seen, please uh, go and make sure you watch it first because this one is based on the previous video. That we take very simple uh, time display using the RTC with these two libraries. Okay, so as also we saw before, we need a button that connected to pin number two. And also here we need two flags. Flag equal to zero and flag two equal to zero also now we need uh, a variable called start equal to two uh, this start we will use it to start to trigger on and off the timer or start and stop the timer okay and we need three arrays here to store and process the date and time variable uh, which is the year month uh, day and weeks and also the most important is the hours minute and second okay this is the object for the RTC in the setup as usual we just define uh, initialize the serial <clears throat> and uh, also initialize the button as the input with pull up resistor so we need to add external pull up resistor we just use the, the built in uh, pull up resistor and also we we check if there's something wrong with the module with the RTC by checking uh, RTC.begin okay if everything okay will be fine will bypass this condition otherwise will display cannot find the RTC module and at the same time if it's found the RTC but for any reason it doesn't work we should by checking if the RTC is running then it will throw an error that the RTC is not running and stop there. Okay. After this, we update the date and time from the computer. Okay. Update the date and time into the RTC chip by using this instruction. And then we start in our loop. Okay. Before we start in our loop, let's take a general idea of what we are doing now. Okay. To do a simple, uh, to do a simple timer, we need two times. We need two times. This is the start time equal to, and also we need the stop time equal to, and then we will calculate the result. Okay, we calculate the period. Or the elapsed time to be more accurate. Okay, which is the elapsed time is equal to 
start time oh sorry not start time let's start with the stop time because always the stop time uh, higher than the start time minus the start time okay so let's say we have any time here and uh, then when we press stop it will record then the newer time then we just stop minus the start time that's all so this is what we're going to program here okay now we come back again so to get the start to to register the start and the stop time we need a variable okay a variable to to trigger here at the start time to register the start time and when press stop it will trigger here to register the stop time then another comment to just minus them that's all then we display the elapsed time that's all okay so first we need to settle this issue that the one variable should be tickle on off to to trigger the start or stop time registration okay and this this one this is the start and stop time registration or the variable that will be toggled for these two it will be changed or toggled by using the push button when we press the push button for example it will start counting and also will register the time when press again it will stop and register the time again then it will minus them by using the ls so that's why here we need to read the, the, the button, the status of the button, and also I need to flag it so the, the code will not be executed more than once. If you don't flag it, whenever you press and hold, the code will be continuously executing, okay? That's why you need flag, and this flag, once this one correct, once, since this one is active law, okay, once, since this one is active law, so it means it's not digital, read button okay and then not flag to i uh, sorry not flag i already declared as a zero so it's true okay not flag then the first thing i will lock it by change the flag into one so this this block will not be executed more than one because of this flag this one will block the condition and then i just toggle the start Okay, toggle the side from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. This note, it just will be take the negative uh, condition or negative value for the previous state. If the side is equal to 1 or any value, let's say 1, 2, 10, 100, it's all considered as a high, it will change to 0. And if 0, it will uh, change to 1. Okay, else if I release the button, when I release the button, the state of the it will be written to high okay because this one's active low so if this one return to high and at the same time this one also high because here I set it to high or set it to one then it will reset the lock into zero so this one can be function again when I press again when I press release press again it will be activate again because when you press it will change the fun the flag to one release back to zero and this condition will be true again, so it will be ready for the next press, and so on. Okay? So this, these two blocks, it just to, to toggle the start from 1 to 0, 0 to 1, whereby we use this start variable to start recording the start time or the stop time. Okay, then we define the now uh, object to display the current uh, time, date and time. And here, if you see, I use switch case for the start because as we see here, as we said just now, the start will be the variable will be toggled from one to zero. That will be activating the start and stop. So here I just switch it, whether it's zero or one. Where's the one here? So I have two cases for start, either zero or one, okay? Let's say if it's zero, it will start the time. If one, it will stop the time, time I stop. Okay, we, we talk in this in details, but the most important, actually for my code, if you see the first initial value for the start is equal to two. 
but all of the values inside the switch is only zero and one. So why I put two? Why I put two? Because I want it to go to default at the first time. Okay, from the first time, I want it to go to default and display, please press to start, press the button. I don't want it to directly start counting. So that's why I didn't start the initial value of the start that one uh, equal to one value inside the switch. I just want it to go to default. And at the same time, if you just put the default without condition again, it will be always displaying press to start, press to start display on the serial monitor. So I lock it again by changing the value of the start. First of all, up there, when I declare the start, I set it equal to two. And here I test if equal to two, okay? First of all, I will change to three. This one will be locked, so it means I guarantee it will be run for once only. And then uh, I display this a message to the user that please press the button to start your timer. Okay? Then if they press the button, now enter here, because we say, well, the first time when you run your code, the case will not be that the switch will not be function any case of the switch will not be function why because the, the start is equal to two and the value of two is not equal to any case inside the switch because we have only zero and one so it will go to default and the default will change it to three however three is still not one of the cases in that, inside the switch we have only zero and one so when it will be changed to one or zero, actually when we press the switch. When we press the switch, pre uh, sorry, press the button, press this button, it will, as we said before, it will toggle the value from high to zero, or high to low, one, zero. Any value more than zero, it consider as a high. When you negative it, it will go back to zero. So if you have three, ten, hundred here, let's say just now the start is equal to three, when negative it, it will become zero. When it becomes zero, it will come to zero again. Okay? When you press it again, let's say now start is equal to zero here. You press again, negative to zero equal to, or not zero equal to one again. Then we we'll go back to one, which is stop the timer here. Timer stop. So we assume we directly, the first time we run the code, then we come here, display please start and the start equal to uh, three when you press the button this code will be activated start not start three convert it to zero then we come to case zero that easy again in this case or in case zero i don't want it to execute it for many times i want to execute it for only once how i flag it again i use flag two then I print serial print just timer is started now and I register first the, the time and date for the start uh, timer or the start time the once you press the button I register the day month year hour minute and second in this array start data uh, start data array okay after I register them here then I display them. I just display to, to, to show the user, okay, this is your starting uh, time or starting date and time. Then I give some delay, then I lock it equal to high. Equal to high means this code will not be function more than once. Why? Because once flag two, you make it high and this one not flag two, this one will be false. So this code will not be function anymore. But this one will be continuously function as long as the start equal to zero. As long as start equal to zero, meaning we are in this case, this is the one we see got no condition for this one. This one will continuously display your current time. After we register the, the, the start time, then it will continuously display, display, display the current time. Unless when it will stop, unless you press the button again, Press this button again to change this, the, 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 the state of the start from 0 to 1. Because if 0 here, zero, uh, uh, not 0 equal to 1, then 
K0 will be stopped, will be blocked. Then it will go where? To case 1. Again, case 1, I flag it. This one take value from the previous one because you already set it high. So case, uh, sorry, if uh, flag 2, which is true, it's flag, flag 2 is equal to 1. Then I'll display some expression like uh, separator space and timer is stop at and same what I did for the start time I have stop data array I will store I will store the current stop date and time once you press convert start from 0 to 1 come to here display this thing on top then I will register the current date and time in the stop array so I have start array and stop array, then again, I display the stop data. Because I want to say, okay, your timer is stop at this time and date. Okay, then that's all. Then we just use the, 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 the function here. What is it? Okay, we assume we use this function. Let's copy. Or before we copy. Or okay, before that, now we have the start data array and stop data array. How to calculate the period or the elapsed time? First, I have this solution. I use for Okay, you forgot about this now. Okay, I have the solution. You uh, use for, okay, to go through all the elements of each individual array. Okay, as we said, the period data equal to stop minus start. This is easy. Then you go, you, you index them with i. So you start from the year, month, day, and also go to the hours, minute, second, you minus each other. But here we will face problem, okay? If you can figure out the problem, let me control this. Okay, here we will face problem is that, like this. For example, now we come to the start time. If your start time, oh sorry, the problem is if your stop time, it looks like smaller than the start time let's say you stop at 1 p.m and let's say 40 minutes and let's say 50 seconds okay and the stop time also 1 p.m 41 minutes and 10 seconds if you use just easily use this uh, use this uh, equation, then the time will be yes. I guess you guess it will be in minus. The time is equal to zero hours. Okay, and here if you minus them one minute and minus forty seconds, which is wrong. It shouldn't be minus 40 okay there is no minus 40 the correct is yes I guess you guess it so this one how to solve this issue okay how to solve this issue I have found two solutions for this okay this is the first solution <coughs> I'm sorry okay the first solution is is to check the result of each uh, of each uh, value. For example, now the period data of I, let's say period data of zero. If this one equal to minus, this means we from here we got some minus. What we will do if we got minus? First of all, we will add sixty. Okay. So first of all, this one we add 60. So mean will be equal to zero hours 
still one minute minus 40 plus 60 20 la I call 20 okay now and I will minus one from the previous uh, data and array okay minus one from the previous data is mean minus one from here then will be equal to zero minus one one minus one zero and twenty okay twenty second only and this is the correct actually the difference between these two two dates is twenty seconds only okay because from 50 to change to another minute is just 10 seconds and here 10 seconds 20 and here is the result 20 seconds okay this is this is solution number one and the second solution is the second solution is we use this function okay we use this function now I want to calculate the period or the time lapse, elapsed time. I use now, which is the current one, the same like, actually now I don't, I don't use the stop anymore. I just use the current one. Okay. Now minus the time span of start of zero, start of three, four, and five. But be careful, this one, this time span, it will be automatically calculate the period for you okay it will automatically calculate the period for you but this one will not take the full date this function will take if I copy so I can comment for you uh, this day uh, this function it takes uh, day hours uh, here is a minute and seconds okay yes okay it will take this variable only so we will not calculate the year and the month take only this variable so the result of start of zero is the day start of three start uh, date of three is the hours minutes and second then now you have a new object called period now i just take the period dot hour period dot minute period dot second which is this okay no arrays anymore okay so for example now i want to the period of these two times uh, in hours I just print out period of hours in minutes and also in seconds okay as this easy or I have another solution actually is to convert all of these data all of this where is it here for example the stop and the start we convert them all into seconds okay we convert all the value into seconds I mean the hours minutes and the second then we minus stop minus start. Then the result or the elapsed time we convert back to hours, minutes, and second back. This is the third solution you might try by yourself and let me know if you succeeded. Okay, after this I print out the elapsed time. Okay, then stop. That's all. That's easy. Okay, so again, very fast. Here we have the libraries that we use to communicate with the RTC the button connect to pin number two we need two flags with start variable this one is to trigger start and stop the timer and also three arrays okay here the for the setup function just initialize the serial initialize the button I don't know what etc RTC is running, not running, set the time. Then the most important is start in the loop. 
first thing on the loop, we will change the state of the start to 1 or 0 whenever we press the button. But since you didn't press the button at the first time you launched your code, it will go to the default value here to execute this and tell you that please press the start. When you press the button to start, automatically the start value will jump to 3. So this code will not be executed more than 1. Okay? And then when you press the button, <clears throat> when you press the button, the start value will be to go. Since it's 3, 3 is high. When you press, it, uh, the, the, the value of the start will be uh, changed to 0. Change to 0 means this case will be active. And again, we'll be checking the value of this flag. If it's true, it will go through here by uh, saving the time and the date of the start. Display where did you start and also block the code. So this one will not be fun uh, executed more than once. Okay, because this one I want to start only the first date being triggered and the same uh, at the same time. I don't need to always keep storing stories. So this one only store the first time you trigger, then that's all. It will be blocked. Then this one just for sake of display only. And then when you press again, you want to stop, you press the same button. So the start will be will be changed from 0 to 1. And at this time, this case will be function. Again, uh, I will be checking the condition of the flag. If it's true, we'll come here to register back the stop. Uh, the stop time and date performing some display then as I told you we have these two solution one and this is the second by using this function and the third solution is the one I told you we convert all of them to second you can try by yourself and then after we calculate then we just display how many hours how many minutes and how many second our timer uh, was running and that's all so let's upload and see how it works. Compiling. Okay, done uploading. So we open this. Okay, here we go. So you see here, once I start, because of the start value here, where's the start value? Start, start. Ah, the start is equal to two. Equal to two. We don't have in the switch value equal to two for the start. Start only uh, the start got only one or zero inside the cases. Two then directly go to the default. And in order to block this default function being executed more than once, I lock it with the start value. Okay, now start is equal to three. Once I press the button now on the breadboard that I show you before that, then the start will be equal to. Yes, equal to zero. Equal to zero, then I expect to see the timer started and to display some time. Now I'm pressing. Here we go. Time started and start to see the the, the date. Okay. Then when I press again, here we go. When I press again, the start jump from zero to one. This condition is false again. And this one will be true, so it will execute this. Okay. And you are lucky enough to see now exactly what we discussed just now the start time you see the start time is a 9 morning now 9 a.m 14 minutes and 54 seconds okay now we see the stop the stop is 9 41 and 3 seconds if we just use the normal equation like this we will got minus what we got some minus value okay but however by using this function or the code i provide for you now all our data is correct we have zero hours zero minutes and nine seconds okay so with this code then we can use like stopwatch timer or we can use even the the, the we use the big seven segment display to display the current timer or the elapsed time for any uh, application Okay, so this is the first uh, code I have wrote for you. This code is to directly calculate the, the time or elapsed time from the RTC. But uh, however, you can get the time not only from the RTC. Maybe you can get the time from the data logger. 
for example, you have you have done some experiment or some you got some data maybe online from the internet. Most of these data will be exported as an Excel sheet. And the Excel sheet, when you read it inside the MCU, it will be as a, a string. It's not integers anymore. If you, if you notice here, all our data is integer. You see, all the data, all the array that we, 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 we are playing with, all integer. That way it's easy for to just take the stop, minus start, I don't know, etc. However, if you take the, the time and the date from the Excel sheet, it will be very headache for you because it's all in uh, the data type of the variable will be is as a string. And string is not easy to directly uh, subtract or add or to any, any process on the string data. But Therefore, I have already prepared another code for you guys. So after this, I will show you how to uh, handle this issue when you have uh, string data stored inside the Excel sheet. Okay.